Darling in the Franks, Episode 10, The City of Eternity. What is going on, party people? It is I, Fumencho, back at it once again with another Darling in the Franks review. Today we are talking about Episode 10, The City of Eternity. Uh, this was a very, very dense episode. My god, there is a lot of interesting things that are at play here. This was a very slow burn type of episode, and um, it, it's... It was good. Like, I, I, I liked it. Just the way the episode opened up, I love that opening dialogue of Zorome describing this, this, this dream, this nightmare, honestly. And then it opening, like, the light going towards in the sky just opening up and you see Zorome falling down on that Klaxosaur. Like, that was really, really cool. Very, very well directed. Uh, very well plotted out scene. And then the conversation with the adults, too. That was dark. That was really dark. I mean, I always assumed that those guys were bad. Like, I, I just, in the beginning of the show, I assumed that, like, yeah, those guys are evil. But now it is basically confirmed, yeah, they have very ill intentions uh, for the, these children, uh, for our squad. And that is, it's interesting, because I, it's, there's still that mystery there. And in a way, just, just in a way, I kind of feel like they're just dangling above our heads just a little bit. It, it feels a little forced. This, this kind of mystery, like, hmm, I wonder what's happening here. This this empty city in this episode, what's going on? Like, I, I kind of get that vibe. Uh, and I, I do realize that not maybe not everybody has gotten that vibe. I do realize that that is a personal issue with, the, with, with what's going on in this episode. It's kind of been going on throughout the series, to be honest. That's one of my main complaints about it, uh, the, the series as a whole. And it, again, it doesn't detract too much from the actual series, but... I feel this sense of just like them constantly dangling this mystery uh, without without ever telling you anything. Uh, even this entire episode, we really don't get very much information uh, regarding this world. We just get more questions that, that, that bug me even more. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Questions are good. You should always have questions uh, when going towards a, a mystery uh, in a series like this. Um, I like the focus on Zorome here. I really do, and it's so crazy because Zorome actually was my least favorite character in the entire series in the beginning. In the first like two or three episodes, I was like, I don't like that kid. He's not my favorite. But now I gotta be honest, he's probably in my top three. It's probably like, like Goro, Zero Two, and and Zorome now, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I really like the focus on him there. I. The dialogue between him and the adult. That's where that's the thick of this episode, and that's where the episode really shines. And that's where things get really, really... That's where the questions start flying. That's, let's just say that. That's where the questions start flying. There's so many different things um, that, that I just don't understand here. First things first, I mean, just the entire city itself, it's empty. Like, there's nobody. There's like two, three people, maybe, uh, that we actually saw. Why are they wearing these weird hats? Uh, in this house, like, what are these weird, like, um, like, chambers that people go into to, like, get happy? Like, what is that? I'm getting some We Happy Few vibes there. Um, and it's just really, like, why is she feeling so sick and tired just hanging around Zorome? Uh, why do they feel the need to, like, scan Zorome when they're bringing him in? What is going on there? Why does Zorome feel some kind of connection to this adult? How does this adult know his code, 666? Like, again, there's like maybe ten more of those questions. It's just, it's so, it's so interesting that they, that they would they would push this forward into the series so early. I, w I wasn't expect. I mean, it's, I'm glad that we're getting this. I'm glad, but it's, and again, it's, it's not really early. It is episode ten. But I just, I was kind of hoping for some of the questions to be answered just a little bit before we start posing some more. Um, but I, I did very much enjoy that conversation there. I did like that. I, I definitely felt a little bit of emotion too when Zorome started tearing up um, when he mentioned that he had this connection with her. It's just, I mean, honestly, like I don't even know what to say. This, it, it's so, it just again, it's just so much. It's so, so dense uh, with uh, inf lack of information. It's just a weird kind of, kind of, kind of form of dialogue there that that that, that you feel this emotion. It's we. It's like a weird emotion. Like, why am I feeling for this this right now? And you can tell she's a little distraught as well emotionally. She, you could tell that she's definitely feeling something too. Um, and there's that last line of dialogue between them when she's like, when, when he says, "Oh, I can't wait to be an adult, and when I become an adult, we can be friends." And she's like, "That would never happen." 
don't you know? Like, you're something, and then it gets cut off. Which is really interesting. I'm, I'm curious, was it cut off because he couldn't hear, or was that just the direction choice? Are we going to get details on what she said? What, what are those words, and will they resonate within Zorome? That I'm excited about. I also love the Miku stuff, too. The, the kind of conversation that he has about Miku. Very, very sexist and, 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 and rude. But I do like how he... And I, I get it from his perspective, because they just don't understand women. They don't understand love or, or, or that kind of relationship between a man and a woman. And I like... I like how he's like, I feel this urge to protect her for some reason when I'm fighting. Like, I don't know what that's about. And it's so interesting. But again, like, there's just more questions there as well. Like, why are they the first crew, the first squad to feel this way towards their partners? Like, why is this a big deal? Um, when, like, Papa and all them are talking, they're like, oh, they must be going through puberty. Like, what is that? Like, didn't they have other squads? Wasn't it already told to us that they had other squads? Like, why weren't they going through that? Did they have, like, an experimentation that, that took that away from them? Is this, like, a different kind of squad? I'm curious there. I really, really am. Honestly, this is all about the, the, this, the overall predictions, though. Like, what is happening next? What is this world? I honestly think... In, in Zero Two in this episode, too, she definitely kind of is very reserved and very held back... And I definitely feel a little bit of emotion there. Like, she knows a little bit what this place is like. Uh, she said that this place is lifeless. I think that was episode two. Um, and she meant it. Like, she, she made sure to clarify that to Hiro. That, no, I meant that. Yeah, this place is it, it is lifeless. It's, it's, it's a bad place. And you get why. Like, you, you understand that. You just, you, you've, it's so weird. It feels like just like a dystopian, weird, like... Like, you have these high hopes for, for a place to be special, and it turns out just to be just nothing. Just, like, just blech. And and I like that. I really do. I, get, I love that kind of false hope, um, and, I, and I love that expectation that the characters have. And they're just like, wait, this is it? I was expecting a feast, you know? That, that, was, that was cool from Futoshi there. Um, and then the end of the episode, we see that she's, like, growing fangs. Did she, al did she always have fangs? I don't think so. I think she's growing things. Maybe she's like slowly becoming more and more of a, cl a claxosaur. Is that is that a thing that, that could happen to her? I'm not quite sure. We still don't know what's going on with that. Was she experimented on by the adults? They mentioned that they had to do some tests on her, and she's like, no, 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 I don't like those tests. Well, it's just I don't know. There's again just so many more questions, and I guess that is kind of my complaint because we don't have any answers. Anyway, I think I'm done rambling on. This has been a very rambly type of review here and i apologize again this it was a very just question based kind of just weird episode that, that that posed a lot of that kind of stuff so i apologize for that i swear normally these reviews are a little more structured but this episode kind of threw me off a little bit uh comment down below and give me your predictions actually let's start jumping into predictions i'd love to hear yours I, I, again, I don't quite know, aside from like the obvious stuff, but like it, it would be really fun to talk about that uh, in the comments below. Just throw your wildest stuff out there. It's one of my favorite parts about this series being anime only, is be because there's no manga, so I don't have someone commenting down below, well, actually, all of this happens, and this happens, and this happens, so, ha, you are wrong. Like, I really don't like that, and now that I'm watching uh, this anime only series, reviewing this anime only series, Getting, getting more good vibes from it. Getting more, like, it's more fun kind of covering this type of series. So, yeah, anyway, comment down below. Give me your predictions on this week's episode of Darling in the Franks. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed anything that I had to talk about today. And also, please be sure to subscribe uh, for more Darling in the Franks reviews, The Ancient Magus Bride, uh, My Hero Academia starting up soon, gaming content, Nintendo stuff. It's, it's, it's a party on this channel. It really is. So, uh, you should join it. Yeah, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching as always, and until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.